Hi, good day everyone. So right now, we will proceed to, um, to our next topic, which is Java arrays. Okay, so let's have a brief introduction or um, definition. What is an array? So an array, it's actually a sequence of memory locations for sorting, oh sorry, for storing data set out in such a way that any one of the individual locations can be accessed by coding its index number. So later on, I will be showing you how or I will be explaining to you guys what is an index all about. Okay, so again, if we will talk about array, this is actually like a variable that um, temporarily stores a data or a value. Okay, an array will also store a, da uh, a data coming from the input or coming from the user. Okay, it really depends on the program itself, by the way. And it can be accessed by using its index number. I also have an example later on how to use or how to access um, those elements or those data inside our array. Okay. So what is an element? So if we will talk about element, an um, element is actually an individual item or individual items within an array. Okay, so basically these are all the data set. Okay, these are all the values inputted by the user or initialized or declared by the program. I will show you an example later on. So example. This is what I said earlier. So basically, this is our index. So our index normally starts with zero. Okay. Then we have um, um, data set one, two, and three. Meaning these three data set are what we call an element. Okay. These are our elements. There you go. Okay, so you've noticed as well in our um, data representation or based in our picture representation here, if you can see, we have actually the array size or the size of our array here, it's actually three. It's three, right? Number of elements, it's, it's actually equivalent to the array size which is three. So if you can see here, we have three allocated spaces. So if you can see one is the first data entered, two and three. So these three um, data set are actually equivalent to the array size, which is actually three. So again, one, two, and three. If we will talk about the index, Take note about this formula. We have n minus 1, meaning the n here, it's actually our array. You will minus it with 1. Okay? So, for example, we have 3 minus 1. The equivalent for that one or the result of the, 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 the difference of this um, mathematical um, expression, it's actually 2, meaning... You will start with 0, then 1, and 2, just like this one. So later on, if you would like to access the element or the data inside our array, all you need to do is to call the index number. So for example, the array name is n, all you need to do is to call um, 1. So basically, it will output 2. Okay, let's have another example. Okay, this is actually the memory model for an array storage. So for example, the name of our array here, it's array X. If you can see here, we have how many array size? Our size of our array here, it's actually four. Am I right? Four. Do we have any element right now? 
No, not yet. And based on this one, um, our um, index started with 0 and it ended with 3. Because again, don't forget about the formula n minus 1, which is equivalent to, um, this is actually equivalent to 4 minus 1. The difference is 3. So it will start with 0, 1, and 2, 3. There you go. Let's proceed. So I will tell you first what are the advantages of an array. First, it's code optimization. Um, it will make um, our code optimized and we can actually retrieve and sort the data efficiently. Um, I will have an example later on on how to insert, how to, uh, how to add an element inside an array but regarding the retrieval, also the sorting, this is for the higher programming. So when we say sorting, uh, we are actually searching for a specific um, data set inside our array, or we are actually um, searching for the element inside the array, like that. We also have random access. So when we say random access, uh, we can get an a, uh, any data located or data allocation at any index position, but it really depends on you because in data structure, if we will talk about um, random access, um, in data structure, there is what we call LILO. LILO, this is what we call um, last in, last out. And we also have FIFO, we have first in, first out. You will know more about this one in your higher programming subject. What actually the disadvantage of an array? So basically for um, the array, um, one of the advantages, or actually I only cited one disadvantage here, uh, which is the size limit. We can only store a fixed size of elements in the array. So for example, you only allotted 10, um, uh, you only allotted array size 10. So it will not exceed to array, uh, it will not exceed to 11, okay? It should be um, um, less than 10 or equal to 10, okay? It doesn't grow its size and runtime. To solve this problem, a collection framework is actually used in Java which grows automatically. We're actually fortunate because we are using Java, but if we will use other programming language, um, this um, the size limit or the size limitation, it's actually, um, it's actually prone. Okay. So for Java arrays, we have two, um, two types. First, we have the single dimensional array, and we also have the multi-dimensional array. I will just give you a, a good example of a single dimensional array. Just like what we had earlier, the um, one, um, one row with many columns or one column with many rows, like that one. This is actually a single dimensional array. So if we will talk about multi-dimensional, we are just like creating a tic-tac-toe. By actually, the tic-tac-toe was evolved, or no, it was not evolved by, oh uh, no, it, it was not evolved, but uh, with, the, with the concept from the multidimensional array, a programmer created a tic-tac-toe. So based on this one, it's a multidimensional. We have three rows and we have four columns. Okay, don't worry because I have a lot of um, examples with uh, these type of arrays. So how to declare a Java array? So first things first, uh, we need to have this kind of syntax or a format. First, we have an element type normally the element type here this is actually your data type 
then the array name don't forget about the bracket here or you can actually use an element type then array name then the bracket okay so i have this example here this is actually equivalent to this one okay so we have int with a bracket then x int with a bracket then ages this is actually the same as int x bracket int ages then bracket okay but there are some other programming ides or java ides that this uh, actually this will not work mostly they're using this one i will show you later on okay so i will show you an example of displaying an element in an array so let me open first my intellij okay so in displaying an array since we already have a picture or a good background of what does array uh, what can array does to our program uh, we can now um, proceed in showing you an example on how to display a java array okay so let me create first a class example one okay example one then of course we need to have our i'm really sorry uh -huh. okay let me make that bigger public class i'm oh, sorry public static void main string then arcs after that we need to use uh, for example uh, we need to use a random num for an array here then we will actually initialize a um, couple of uh, what do you call this a couple of um, elements inside our random num array so we have for example we have three we have 13 we have 23 uh, we have 33 43 we have 53 we have 63 we have 73 83 and 93 okay, for example okay after i'm um, putting that one um, let me try right now to display um, those elements so again how to display elements so all you need to do is just to use or just to um, type the name of the um, the name of the what do you call this um, the name of the array then the index so since we started with index zero you need to put it there and don't forget the semicolon I believe that I already used this random num. I will just need to use exam uh, array exam like that one. This one. There you go. Next, since I have how many again? How many elements that I initialize? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I will be, um, you will be expecting that I will be showing zero to nine um, indexes. One moment. Oh God, sorry. Okay, so zero, one, two, three, four five six seven eight nine there you go so after this one i think this is it so let me try to run this code okay so right now i was able to display um the elements inside my array array exam or array example okay there you go okay we also have another way or there's actually another uh, I will show you another 
two ways on how to display an element um, in an array. So let's proceed to the second example. So this is example two or example 1.1. 1. 1. Let me try. Let me try copying this first. Let's okay. Let me copy it and paste it here. But for us to make this easier, uh, we will be using for loop. Okay, so our for loop here, um, it should be like this. So for then int, we will declare or we will initialize int i to 0. Then i should be less than the array exam or array example. Don't forget to put the dot length. I will also explain the dot length, um, um, the dot length later on in our succeeding slides. Then I plus plus. So after this, uh, we will also now put the system that out dot print ln and array. Sorry, this is array exam. Then put the I here. There. Where this is I? Why it's Y? Sorry. Let me try to run this one before I will explain it. There you go. It's still working. Okay, I will explain this code. So basically, um, the longest way on how to display an element in our array, it's doing like this. Okay, this is actually the, um, the longest way. But if you want to have a shortest way and the easiest way, you can actually use this one. Okay, since you already, we already have elements in our array, and we also have our array here, all we need to do is to create a for loop. So what's the purpose of this for loop? Basically, um, we initialize a value i, uh, sorry, we initialize a variable i with, uh, uh, with a value 0. Why I put 0? Why not 1? Because again, the purpose of this for loop is to get the index and display it. The index started with 0. It did not start with 1. So that's why it's 0 here. i, it's less than the array exam, which is the array name, dot length. Okay, then i++. plus plus. So if ever that this is true, it will display, the program will display the array exam i, which is 0. So basically, it will display 3. Next. Because of the increment, it displayed 13, 23, until 93. Okay? I have another way on how to display an element by using a for each. Okay? So let me create a new class. Example 1.2. Okay, there you go. I will just copy this one. Okay. I will make it bigger. There you go. There. So now I'll be erasing this. I need to remove that. And I need to use the for each. So here I'll be using still an I. Then I'll be using an asterisk uh, sorry this is a colon asterisk sorry then after that we need to put the name of the array which is array oh uh, sorry this is array exam there then system that out dot print ln all need to do it's to only display or call the value of i if we will try to run this one, uh, actually the for each, as long as you already understood um, the essence or, or, or the purpose of the for loop, this is actually 
um, you can be able to easily understand the for each. Okay? So all you need to do here is to put the for loop again. You initialize the value. And then, of course, the array exam, which is here, which is the, uh, which is the array name. And then system that out, the i here. Okay? So if we will run this code or this program, it displays the same. That is how to display or um, to display an element in our array. 